sitcoms began in the 1940s with an authentic family tradition and cons conservation were strong elements in early sitcoms. The typical characters were the scatterbrained wife and the hand-pecked husband. A perfect example of this is Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball as they play in their very popular show I Love Lucy. From the years 1955 to 1965 were the Donna Reed years, in which one sitcom family after another struggled with the big domestic issues of the time, measles, girlfriends, school problems, and little white lies. In the mid-1960s, real eccentricity was added to the American TV family with the emergence of fantasy as a popular television form. That good, good girl. <laughs> are deposited in the machines by runners posing as customers. Of course. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. All my looking for a girl. The girl. Girl. The girl. The girl. The crazy fair, but they're cousins. Identical cousins all the way. Better living. Each new television family during this period added social complex to Dio's home life. Norman Lear, an articulate, persuasive, and determined producer, managed to tuck CBS into making a show about a lower middle class bigot and his family. Lear then executed a social pincer movement. His show, All in the Family, was just the beginning. That's right, the official Funkin' Wagnall of feminine foxitude. <laughs> da 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 your sister Rose is dead. <laughs> yes. Sitcoms of today are far more liberal than before. They push the edge in acceptability of language and subject matter. A movement in the early 80s expanded the sitcom's vocabulary because of our society's impending problems. Sitcoms address those problems head-on. Our humor, though, tends to degrade humanity, and it may get worse. Well, then I've got three days to pump me up. <laughs> oh, please. Bing-ching! 